bright duty every student matters hello students today we are studying chapter number 3 citizenship from political science class 11th let's see what we are going to do in this chapter let us do what is in citizenship types of citizenship acquisition of citizenship in india and global citizenship now first of all let's see what is exactly the citizen is let me tell you the word citizen see we know that politically organized society of a definite territory is known as state now as we live in india so the people those who are living here are indians but how how they are called indians let's see every individual who permanently resides within the state territorial limit is given certain civil political and socio economic rights by the states so besides the state expects certain duties from those who live in the state and also make use of these rights now if we talk what kind of rights we say civil political socio economic rights so a person who has all these type of rights is called the citizen of the country now i do remember one uh, definition by harold j laski that citizenship uh, are the member like citizenship are the members of a civil society and bound to the society by certain duties subject to its authority and equal participant it's an advantage now if i take the words of t h marshall as written here on the screen like full and equal membership of a community means by uh, community he meant political community state citizenship denotes a legal status of an individual it bestows upon individuals equal rights and duties liberties and constraints powers and responsibility now citizenship is not mere state the word citizen therefore refers to a person who is a member of some return for the allegiance and loyalty which he or she owes to it and we talk of ourselves as indians or british because of the particular nationality that we have and the rights and the duties that we have because of it so if we talk about full and equal membership of a community or or a state what does it denote now it denotes like the phrase full and equal membership of a community denotes the ideal condition citizenship is a principle and educational factors should not determine the rights which a citizen has the importance of full membership may be gathered from the destiny of those who import the full membership and uh, who suffered from deprivation of political and civil rights like if we talk about south africa it was once a racist regime blacks and indians as you all know even uh, our honorable uh, father of the nation mr mahatma gandhi was also there to help all those uh, black africans uh, for the discrimination which they had at their colonized period and uh, while minority like about 15% of the population today it is a free country now let's see what are the characteristics or the features of a citizen full and equal membership of a state then uh, a citizen possess three different kinds of rights civil political and social this i have already mentioned political rights and ensure citizens participation in state affairs that means interference that means you could be the part of political affairs that means in democracy a citizen can talk about the political affairs of the state then rights are correlated with duties and functions such as duty to defend the country and render national service when called upon to do so and the idea of active citizenship place particular emphasis upon the social duties and the moral responsibilities of citizens such as the duty to protect and improve the natural environment and the duty 
of parents and to provide opportunities for education to their children right and citizens differ from aliens and subjects because they are full of members their political community or sect now let's see what are the types of citizenship have you ever heard about the types of citizenship can we uh, talk about all these what kind of citizenships are there now there are different types first of all let's discuss that uh, the people are called citizens who have some peculiar characteristics they are bestowed upon uh, with certain rights by the state and they remain loyal towards the state they also perform certain duties citizens are of two types uh, like uh, the first one is your uh, natural born citizens and second one is your naturalized citizens so let us talk about the natural born citizens is based on two principles like blood relationship and place of birth let's see how if we talk about the natural born like i mean uh, the natural born citizens are those citizens who acquire citizenship due to birth and heredity right and most of the citizens of state are natural born citizens so let's talk about natural born citizen later on we'll talk about it now next one is your uh, place of birth according to this uh the citizen the child's citizenship is uh, determined by the place of its birth and all children born within the territory uh, of a particular state are considered as the citizen and if some parents go abroad on a tour and the child is born in some other country it will acquire the rights of citizenship of that country and not that of his father's country according to his principle through citizenship is easily determined and yet it is not logical to and although the father's blood is running through the, his veins he cannot become the citizen of his father's country only due to the chance factor so this principle is in vogue in argentina and in argentina it happens now let's talk about what is citizenship citizenship implies full and equal members of a political community the theory is given by different liberal political thinkers suggests that citizenship should be universal this means that every member of the community should be given citizenship it also means that every person irrespective of caste color sex and status should be considered worthy of giving rights and duty educational factors should not determine the rights which citizen has and the importance of full membership may be gathered from the destiny of those who suffered from deprivation of political and civil rights now now let's take an example of south africa now what south africa is south africa was once a racist regime and where you know um, our uh, father of the nation mr mahatma gandhi also went there to advocate those people because they were discriminated there was a regime of uh, like uh, like blacks and whites and it was uh, equally so he went there to help them and you know blacks and indians were not allowed to live in the area occupied by the uh, the white people the ruling people and when minority uh, like white minority was 15% of the population and today it is a free country now let's see what are the characteristics of a citizen exactly what are the features of a citizen the characteristic features of a citizen are as uh, follows like full and equal membership of the state and a citizen possesses three different kinds of rights i told you earlier to civil political and social political rights ensure citizens participation in state affairs and political rights ensure citizens participation in state affairs as well now how state affairs like it is they are talking about democratic state so when it is democratic state citizens do have right right in democratic state citizens have right to uh, interfere the state affairs as well so rights are correlative with duties and functions that means if we are getting some um, uh, we could say uh, like we get the rights so on the parallel side we have few duties also to perform for the nation right so as a citizen we have both the things like duties and the rights as well 
so the idea of active citizenship places particularly emphasize upon the social duties and moral responsibilities of citizens such as the duty to protect and improve the natural environment the duty of parents to provide opportunities for education to their children and citizens different from aliens and the subjects because they are full members of their political community or state now let's move to the types of citizenship now there are two kinds of citizenship and on the basis of like uh, the first one is natural born and the second one is your naturalized citizens now let's see how the blood relationship the child acquires the citizenship of his father or mother irrespective of the fact whether the parents at the time of the birth of the child were living in some foreign state or in their own country and this is called the principle of blood relationship and many states follow the principle such as austria france italy and others second one is your place of birth according to this principle the territory on which the birth uh, occurs is a decisive factor and a person born within the territory of a particular state is a considered citizen of that state irrespective of the fact where the, his parents belong to and the state or not so this is called the principle of place of birth now the double nationality now what is double nationality britain and united states have followed both the principles the principles of blood relationship and the principle of the place of birth that means from where the parents are and from and where the child is born both so this may lead to the seize of double nationality for instance if the french couple goes to england and there is a child born there then the child would have both the nationality now let's see how what we mean by citizenship citizenship implies full and equal members of a political community the theory is given by different liberal political theorists suggest that citizenship should be universal and it means every member of the community should be given citizenship and it also means that every person irrespective of his caste color sex and status should be considered worthy of giving rights and duties so in fact citizenship is a qualification that makes a man worthy of getting the rights and discharging of duties and responsibilities now let's move towards the second question uh, as we have read about and these are the essential characteristics of the citizenship now citizenship is a membership of the political community it is a qualification based on equality and freedom it has rights and facilities duties and obligations trust and confidence where the members of the community are and the contents and the ideas is expanding as per the democratic development now how did citizenship explain the relationship between the citizens and the state citizenship is not concerned with the technical relationship between the states and the people it has a number of aspects like legal aspect political aspect socio economic aspect moral aspect and psychological aspects and it is also citizen to citizen rather people to people relationship and involves certain duties and obligations of citizens for the states and also for themselves are also considered inheritors trustees of the culture and natural sources of the country now let's see children all citizens may be granted equal rights but all may not be able to equal exercise them and this is very true like rights are given to all the people but everyone is not able to exercise them equally let's see how all citizens may be granted equal rights but may not be able to equally exercise why due to the reason socio economic inequality that prevents equality of opportunity lack of accessibility to legal remedies then lack of awareness of the rights people don't even know how to utilize their rights then corruption obviously you all know corruption is there so the things are not going on according to the procedure so it apparatus that prevents the delivery of services covered under these rights and the consequences of these factors can be seen in the following examples let's see how how all these things uh, come to a result what kind of result is that every child has right to education but some children are not sent to school due to gender biasness you all know it very well and poverty and therefore are engaged in child labor like they're forced to work they they have become child labor and at that time children are very helpless they want to go for education but they are not just because of the gender biasness many women are not aware that physical and mental torture by their husband comes under domestic violence so they are not able to seek legal remedies a few short questions also what is citizenship 
it is a legal relationship that binds an individual to the state of which he is a member then two types of citizenship natural and naturalized citizenship then what is meaning of apartheid i told you the discrimination on the basis of race that racism apartheid means social discrimination and who was th marshall he was a british socialist and which rights are considered most important by th marshall in his uh, idea of the citizenship civil rights political rights and social rights and when was national policy on urban street vendors were framed national policy was urban street vendors was framed in january 2004 and who is citizen citizen is that member of population of state who enjoys all the rights civil as well as political under the protection of state in return for the allegiance he owes to the state